Okay, so I haven't really prepared much. Uh, uh, if anyone wants, we can walk through some of the things, what the screens look like. But besides that, I suggest that we simply do this as some kind of question and answer session. Uh, so we've got several quite experienced people here. Uh, and everyone is welcome to step in and discuss, give comments, respond, and so on. And um, well, that means that I can relax a bit and just add now and then a few comments from some kind of global point of view. Um, so I think it could be useful to discuss the different, for instance, the different kind of rules we got in the polyglots team, um, because uh, I have some feeling that uh, being a GTE is actually a little bit less about translating and much more about curating a team, uh, helping the team to grow and become more stable and thinking about perhaps um, what you can do to maintain quality, uh, set a decent quality level for uh, your l uh, language, depending on what kind of resources you've got. Um, in this way, Nilo, of course, is in a wonderful situation where he represents a huge polyglots team and they can really take on big uh, tasks for what they want to achieve and also actually manage to do that at the same time as um, in Swedish for instance yeah we're <laughs> basically just two guys keeping up and uh, uh, and I'm the lazy one so <laughs> so um, we need to have lower expectations on what we can do um we could just start i think by walking around this virtual table so you can see a couple of words of who you are and how long you have been doing what with wordpress and uh, after that we can go into some well open-ended discussion um i suggest we start with joseph our hero from uh, our first <laughs> mentor uh, mentor tour that we had last year. Yes. I'm the uh, first mentee and the, the second WordPress program. I'm a mentor to the onboarding Polyglots team. That's great. Yeah. And the funny thing is that I and Joseph we live how much? 15 kilometers or 20 kilometers from each other, but we haven't yeah. met yet. <laughs> 20, 20 kilometers. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. So uh, you have yeah. no excuses for not going to his meetups. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the problem is yeah, saying. I have problems understanding Catalan, right? In, in Spanish. Uh, in Spanish. Uh, I speak Spanish, Spanish than... a little bit less bad than yeah. I speak Catalan, but still <laughs> it's my third yeah. language or something. Ah, fourth, sorry. Yes. What? Yeah. Um, Nilo? I'm, as you said, I'm a uh, Spanish from Spain GD. I have been working with WordPress in 26. 200, sorry, since 206 or something like that and contributing with the community from much later like uh, 2012 or something like that uh, i'm have been a wordpress developer for the last 20 years but now i also do things with video photography and a lot of translation yeah welcome patricia well, ah, Patricia, um, I shouldn't use the Spanish pronunciation. That's yes, not nice. It's closer to French, so <laughs> yeah. So it's more correct. 
Uh, yes, I'm Patricia from the French speaking part of uh, Switzerland, Geneva, near Geneva. And I contribute mostly to the community team uh, organizing events. And uh, I have done some translations many, many years ago, um, but just submitted. I have never been uh, like PT duty, uh, maybe PT for one thing. But I'm I'm very close to the French community, and I know the the GTE PTs from France. Because in yeah. Switzerland we use the French local. Yeah, uh, we've got a German Swiss um, local, but we don't have any specific uh, yeah. Italian or French for Switzerland. There, there, were, there is much more differences between the German spoken in Switzerland than ja to German. Uh, in Switzerland, we use the same French as <coughs> French, you know, except yeah. for the, some numbers, but that's... <laughs> yeah. But you have a different currency, different uh, regional ter uh, distribution. We have a different currency, yes, Swiss francs. But we we speak the same language, so and we are very much um, like tied to, tied to the French culture, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and it's uh, also something about the Swiss local. It's also something I've been talking with Pascal Casier, who is uh, the GT for the uh, French for Belgium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said it's basically a copy of the French from France. And he started, uh, he said, now I have to keep maintaining it, but it's not worth it. Yeah. For us, uh, it's not worth because it's so similar. Yeah. And uh, I speak a little bit of Swedish. Toby. Okay. So that we can have a secret language here and nobody yeah. will understand. <laughs> Just to say that if you want to learn Spanish or Catalan, is a is the perfect idea to go to 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 the meetups. Yeah. And yeah. Nilo has a nice story about someone who is attending all the online meetups and mm -hmm. languages. So, yeah, it's a good way. But in Switzerland, uh, you also speak Romance or something like that. Romance. Uh, uh, very few people know about this. So congratulations. No, that, uh, actually, that's our best local. <laughs> Okay, because the, there is there are four official languages, but it's by region. So we have in the French speaking part we learn German, but I forgot <laughs> mostly most of it because you know school is a long time ago. And in the German part, they they can learn Italian or French, and, but we don't all speak all the languages, of course. Good. Okay, time for next person. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Um, oh, hi everyone. Uh, do you work? My name is very good. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, uh, I have been in WordPress like contribute and training team like seven months actually. This one, yeah, seven months already. And I started because I love, I passionate with uh, languages because uh, I uh, do say here we, I think that some of people speak Spanish. And uh, lucky for me that I live in Spain too. So uh, I love Spanish too. <laughs> and uh, I live in Madrid. So I'm not sure that is nearby you or not. Um, what else? Um, yes, I, actually, I don't know why, why I'm here, like why I'm in like Burglar team, because I actually like want to become mentee, but uh, I love your language. So that's the reason I think that's um, the, uh, the hosting, like uh, you beat us to train too. I contribute in the team and um, besides of that and um, i was so much and contribute so much in the training team oh more times yeah okay wonderful welcome uh antonella uh, you are muted still so yes hello, hello. <laughs> i'm antonella from italy i live near milan and uh, i'm a totally wordpress beginner so uh, I've been a translator for um, 24 years um, due to, to my job and 
two years ago, I began to study um, uh, front end and WordPress development. So I started uh, my journey to WordPress and um, I submitted some translations in, in this period, but um, I've never been uh, uh, totally involved in the community. So I'm totally new. <laughs> this is a new experience for me. And I'm uh, I'm willing to learn a lot from this mentorship program. <laughs> yeah, good. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank and, you. And you are very lucky living where you live, just uh, <laughs> a couple of hours from the next World Camp Europe. Yes, <laughs> it's in Turin. Yeah, uh, Tapan. Hello. Hi, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Tapan from Dhaka, Bangladesh. Uh, I'm in WordPress uh, actually since 2020. Mm, uh, that time I decided to uh, shuffle, um, I mean, uh, uh, steer my career to WordPress. Mm, and then I uh, I was joining, uh, I joined some um, local companies first and then to brainstorm force. And then I, I had to leave because um, I'm planning my families, so uh, I have my babies grow up, so, so I had to give him more time, so I decided to start part-time job, and then I found that I have some spare times, <clears throat> and I, I know about the contribution work uh, before I was translating in, uh, um, in Bengali, so I decided to um, more focus on this translation thing, and uh, also uh, also some other contribution as well. So I'm exploring the contribution uh, contribution team. Uh, so um, that is why I'm here. Uh, I think that is it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Satyam. Hi, I'm Satyam Vishwakarma from Uttar Pradesh, India. I am uh, doing blogging since 2019 and discovered WordPress uh, in 2022, 2020 and uh, started using it uh, from last, uh, year, last year, 2023, I uh, visited WordCamp Bhopal first time and the experience was like overwhelming and by meeting a vibrant WordPress community. So I started looking for more to like involve with the WordPress community and uh, started looking for contribution. And after joining WordCamp Mumbai, I met with the uh, uh, Kafal Ganga and had a discussion about how I can contribute to WordPress. And he guided me to go to documentation and book and see what fits with me. So I started contributing to WordPress uh, since uh, uh, November 2023 and uh, was like figuring out how I can effectively contribute. Like I had uh, re read all the documentation handbook for uh, interested teams, but I, I, haven't, I don't have had the idea to contribute, how to contribute. Like if I am reading a contribution to documentation, how I can uh, create a document document like oh, yeah. write a post and publish it so uh, after i attend, attended uh, attended word camp udaipur i had uh, i met with a uh, uh, few other wordpress folks they guided me like how i can uh, start contributing and uh, someone suggested to contribute through translation. It's uh, like a very easy way to contribute. Uh, so I started contributing to uh, 
polyglots and in hindi and also submitted my first photo and it got approved and the joy i had that time after contributing my first photo and i got my first badge in photo contribution so i started from there and uh, till till since then i am contributing to uh, photo directory as a photo contributor and a photo photo moderator and uh, contributing to polyglots and uh, recently my meetup group i uh, got approved and will be uh, organizing meetups in my local city very soon and this opportunity came in light and i thought i would as i had a uh, interest in many uh, teams to contribute as a diverse uh, someone who can contribute to many teams and uh, so i had selected few teams and i have been selected for the polyglots and support and we are here it's good to see you. And Satyam, you also... And yeah, I am. I also selected for the WordCamp Europe volunteer team, wow. and recently volunteered at a next gen global event WordCamp uh, WordPress Photo Festival, and moderated almost one eighty photos within three days. Wow. Yeah, I was going to mention that you have been accepted as a volunteer for WordCamp Europe. Looking forward to meet you. Hi, too. Thank you. Uh, Patrick, welcome. Hello, uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, my name is Patrick Lumumba, and I'm from Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, I'm one of the mentees. And uh, uh, before becoming a mentee, I uh, I think I'm supposed to start with my journey with WordPress. I, I actually started using WordPress in uh, 2012 uh, without knowing exactly what I was going to do with it. I had seen someone blog using WordPress.com and I also jumped ship. I mean, I, I also started using it and then later came to realize that there is also uh, the WordPress.org, which gives lots of freedom. And after a few years, I started using WordPress.org. And I enrolled for a few web development courses, went into blogging. Uh, that is between 2016, 2017, all the way to 2020, actually up to 2023. So I started contributing, I think, um, earlier this year, in January. That's when I started contributing. I The first thing that I did was I joined the organizing team for the Nairobi WordPress community. And then um, uh, also started contributing to uh, translating WordPress to Swahili local. Actually, we found WordPress Swahili uh, translated to around 60 something percent. And uh, together with uh, the other the other the other uh, GTE, we were able to mobilize. I actually got approved as a GTE. And then uh, we were able to mobilize other members of the community and we took it to 100. So WordPress is fully translated to Swahili. That's wonderful. Which is a very wonderful thing for us. You know, Swahili is uh, Swahili is uh, is a language that is commonly used in East Africa, in Kenya, and in Tanzania. If you've ever been to Tanzania, they don't usually use English. Actually, most of them don't use English. They use Swahili. So it's a good thing for us that now WordPress can be used by, you know anyone within within East Africa. Yeah, so joining mentorship program, I'm here to you know learn how to contribute more and to meet everyone else. Uh, thank you so much. 
That's great. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, Matteo. Hi. Hi, all. Uh, sorry, my English is uh, more and more horrible. Um, and for World Camp Europe is the first uh, time to speak uh, many, uh, many times in English. And uh, uh, so uh, I'm a web developer. I um, start uh, to contribute uh, in, um, in WordPress uh, uh, become a speaker in a uh, work camp in Italy. I'm uh, I'm from uh, Sardinia, but I live in Milan. Um, I start to contribute in the um, polyglot team is uh, very casually. I. Uh, published my first plugin. I need to uh, publish the translation of uh, my label. I know the Italian um, polyglot teams and uh, I start the um, uh, long collaboration. I I love uh, this team uh, and uh, stop. <laughs> yeah. Thank and you. Mat Matteo was a speaker in uh, my city, Welcome Geneva 22, and he oh. can speak in English. Uh, and you had, you took that like a challenge and you did very well. And thank you again for coming in 22. Thank you. <laughs> it's my first talk in English in Geneva. Thanks. Uh, Quentin? Hey, everyone. Hi. Nice to meet you all. Uh, just for introducing myself, uh, I'm from time from France. Uh, never contributed right now to to the WordPress community, but I'm working with WordPress since seven years now. Uh, two years uh, by myself and five years in in, in agency, sorry. Um, and I just want to give back to the community because um, uh, that's WordPress is uh, the, the the base the, the, of everything I'm doing uh, in my professional life today. So I just want to give back, and uh, I was thinking that uh, starting in the polyglot team uh, could be a, a good a good a good start. So and I think that's a that's a good way to 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 meet good people and to to introduce myself to open source projects. Yeah, and of course, I mean you can spend as little as a couple of minutes and still do a meaningful contribution and that's great yes <laughs> yeah thank you so i think have we missed anyone just to be on the safe side i believe those bots won't really present themselves so yeah um where do we start are there any questions or thoughts or perhaps those of you who have recently started contributing, perhaps you want to tell us what was easy, what was hard, what you would wish that you would know better before you started. And anyone can start speaking, speaking is fine. If, if I can just suggest, um people who arrive uh, contributing to polyglot team uh, may find a lot of new words and terms so maybe it's good to explain what is uh, glotpress pte gte and also the the file format that we can find uh, once we translate on translate.wordpress.org 
Par oh, exemple, yeah. the, what are the PO, POMO, POT, JSON for blocks? And now I read that there is the L10N localization PHP coming to WordPress 6.5. So if yeah. you can explain about all of this, that could be, that could help clear things up. Sure. So, um, first of all, if you hear these strange abbreviations and terms, don't get scared. Uh, it's just terms for things that we are touching more or less deeply when we uh, deal with translations. Nilo sent a hint here um, with I18N, which is a short way of writing internationalization, which is what the developer would do to prepare their plugin or theme or other code for translation. So it's about putting in the, well, making it technically possible to translate, of course, that is the most important, but also think through things like what terms they put, uh, are there any things that would need to be a bit better dis um, explained and so on. For instance, uh, a word we often mention as an example, the word post, if you just have a short string that says post, then you don't really know, is this an article or is it an, a verb to publish something? Or I mean, in some cases, post means something totally different. Yeah, yeah Neil says here that in internationalization, when we write it as I18N, the 18 is just a short way of uh, hinting that we took away 18 digits, uh, uh, letters in between. And uh, the other word that comes is in uh, is localization. So it's an L and then 10 other letters and then an N at the end. So localization, uh, which is, um, well, translation from, in our case, English to the various target locals or target languages that we deal with. Um, and localization could also be some other things. For instance, sometimes we have quite strange strings that are like, yes, no, on, off. And then you read the explanation for the string and you realize that, no, I shouldn't translate this. I should check, for instance, if this particular uh, font would work in my target language. And if it would work, then it can be loaded. And then I would translate this as on or yes or something. And if it wouldn't work in my language, then I should make a different uh, translation, which means that this font won't be lo loaded for this language because it won't work. So localization and internationalization is not only about translation. Uh, it could also be, in some cases, um, adjusting for regional differences, uh, like Nilo hinted on earlier in this uh, discussion, when he said that in Switzerland, they would be using Swiss francs rather than euros. And in some cases, uh, localization could take into account that kind of differences or cultural differences. Um, does red always mean stop, for instance? Um, yeah. That is something you can dig into <laughs> when you have some free time. And yeah, Patricia mentions date and time format. This is a dangerous thing. Um, Americans and English, for instance, uh, their dates may look exactly the same, but then you suddenly realize that what is the day of the month and what is the month number is not always that uh super clear and also number formats um it's a really tricky one because um in sweden for instance we would use a comma to say that okay this is where the decimals start 
where comma in American English is something you have to uh, split thousands and millions from the rest of the number, and they would use a dot or a stop to say that, okay, this is where the decimal starts. So there are lots of things that can go wrong. Uh, we had uh, other things here, uh, file formats for the translated files. Um, when we translate WordPress, we would deal with PU files, which is a text file format. An MO file is the same information, but encoded in a way that is much more efficient for the computer to use. So translations that get used on your WordPress site are currently mostly lifted from an MO file, although not always, uh, because JavaScript uses a different format to store translations, and that is JSON, which our translation platform also very nicely can produce. Then uh, Patricia also mentioned here POTS, which is, um, in our case, um, PO file template. Uh, so it's a file that developers sometimes create to make it easier for localization to update their list of strings that may need to be translated. However, on our own translation platform, we don't actually use the pod files uh, because uh, our platform, which is based on Glotpress, which is also a free and open um, program that runs <laughs> inside WordPress, um, it will scan the um, temp uh, the the WordPress themes and the WordPress plugins to check if there are any new strings that need to be added to a translation process. And translate.wordpress.org is where we do these things and where Glotpress runs and we can suggest strings. And if we have been approved as a translation editor, we can just add strings and we can approve or reject strings that have been suggest suggested by other users. And um, anyone registered on wordpress.org is available, is allowed and welcome to suggest strings. But before we let anyone just uh, enter strings that could be distributed to thousands of users of a plugin, who have WordPress installed in your language. We want to know that this person, well, is able to translate as at a decent quality. And this thing, the decent quality is one of the important things that makes so big difference between our various language or local teams. Because in some countries or, or languages, they have big, teams who are able to spend a lot of time and they can afford putting a very high expectation on the quality. And uh, they will be, <laughs> I will be using a strange word, but slightly more perhaps militaristic or, but, or we can say sli slightly more organized. And uh, then in other languages, it's more like checking if um, the person seems to actually know the language and is not only uploading machine translations that haven't been checked. So um, that is what we're dealing with. And uh, we've got a couple of uh, specific terms. One is a PTE, which is a Project Translation Editor. So someone, a user can be set as a, P, at, as a PTE and that will always be for a particular language, target local, and for one or several translation projects. A translation project can be a specific plugin or a specific theme, or it could actually be 
all plugins or all themes and uh, when someone assigns that way then we sometimes half jokingly call that a super PTE and a GTE is the next role that is someone who has some responsibility for the translation quality and the survival of the team on the level of a full locale so uh, they are of course able to check and approve translations but uh, they also uh, will be looking into finding new contributors see seeing if they could uh, if the new contributor would need some mentoring to get started better and uh, especially GTEs or global translation editors are very welcome in our uh, slack channel polyglots where they can always get support from GTEs for other languages if they get stuck in some way on how to do something or how to evaluate something or sometimes we have seen some uh, cases where a lot of incorrect strings have been uploaded to several languages and then of course they would cooperate to um, distribute information about where this was and uh, perhaps help each other to clean this up a little bit. Then we've got and all these rules are individual roles. So here we are looking at uh, an, a, a living person who registers as a contributor to WordPress. And we want to check if this person is capable of doing a good translation to Swahili. Then the Swahili team can check and see, yeah, this is good. And they may uh, uh, set this contributor as a PTE. And uh, then we've got a completely different thing, and that is the CLPT, the Cross Local Project Translation Editor. Uh, that is a different way of ensuring translation quality because here the uh, uh, CLPT is an administrative role, so it's not uh, a physical person, but rather a function and the idea here is that if a translation um, if a, a developer uses professional duly instructed translators then they can check the translation quality well already from start and then it becomes just an administrative thing of uploading these translators uh, translations so uh, a CLPT is not able to approve or reject or change other contributors translations they can only upload translations that they have received themselves uh, in the well correct way um, and how to become pt or gt a uh, very good question thank you for asking so um, the best way it's always to talk to your own local team. So if you go to, um, I'll try to share my screen. And uh, here we go. Yeah. Uh, so we've got um, this page. Um, Of course, it will load much slower when you're presenting. That's just only normal. I hope it is still working. So we've got in uh, the website for make wordpress.org slash polyglots slash teams. We've got this list with all language teams that are defined on our platform right now 
and uh, the background color here is a hint to the status of the WordPress core translation for this locale. So you can see that Albanian or Skip is uh, in good shape, but Afrikaans, uh, the latest releases we have seen were for 5.7. So right now that is a sleeping or dormant locale. Uh, we had a couple of people contributing, but they dropped off um, two, three years ago. And that is something that happens when you're totally reliant on uh, voluntary resources. Key things we can see in this list is the WordPress locale. This is the key when you want to mention the lo local as a local tag to um, uh, make uh, them aware that you have sent a request or something. And on the team page, we can see who is uh, involved in this particular team. So let's look at Skip or Albanian. We've got one locale manager and the local manager is like, I would say an administrator for a particular language. They are at, on the one hand able to set someone as a translation editor, but on the other hand, they are also like the main administrator who can uh, well, uh, assign someone as an editor for a locale and so on. So um, I, I would say this is like a community role, but indirectly they have something to say about the language and the general translation editor is, yeah, so it's not global, it's general. So general translation editor is the role uh, who makes sure that translations are working and trying to check if there are new translators coming around. And then in this language, we've got six accounts uh, assigned as PTE. And then uh, we have a total of 21 more, uh, uh, it's a total, Besnik is included. Okay, so in total, uh, we have had translations uh, the last, I think, year or so from 21 contributors. And then the Hall of Fame of uh, contributors who have at least some time, perhaps long time ago, contributed at least one string. And in this way, you may see my name or like here, Naoko, uh, in many places, because now and then we have just <laughs> rushed out to fix perhaps some technical faults in some string or something. And uh, that make us, oh, Matteo, is that? Oh, that's a different, that, that's not you, Matteo, no? And, uh, um, and uh, just to have it recorded here, Let's see what it looks like when you want to translate something. So I, let's say I come to translate wordpress.org and I will be presented with this list of target locales. And um, I will pick Swedish here because if I suddenly now contribute some translation, then it's better be a language I know. And uh, here we can see the different areas. We've got WordPress, which is WordPress core, where the latest version is 6.4, but we will have 6.5 coming up in a week or something now, I guess. And then we got a lot of older translations as well for previous versions of WordPress. Themes is the catalog of free WordPress themes that are available on our platform. Commercially available themes that are not distributed through this platform are not available on this platform. So those developers, when they publish professional or commercial 
themes or plugins, they will also need to solve how they are going to handle distribution of translations. Plugins in the same way is the plugins that are available in our catalog of free plugins from the community for the community. And here the community can contribute translations. So here um, we can select which translations we would like to see first. And we can search and filter because this is a huge number. I mean, it's like 1,867 pages. Wow. Uh, let's look for health check, for instance. So, ah, oh, this one is already up. So we will look here at uh, the plugin itself is already translated. And you can see there are for plugins when they are correctly uh, created in the platform, you have two versions. It's the stable one, which is what is currently used uh, as the valid tagged version. And if uh, a developer wants, they could upload um, version that will or may not be but soon released in the trunk and that way it is possible to translate some strings before the release itself happens and we've got the readme which is the strings or the text that will be visible on the uh, page about this plugin if you go to the plugin page for this particular um, plugin uh, in this language. And here we've got a couple of strings. So I may want to translate something here, but I need to be logged in. And uh, let's do that. But I will log in as someone who, uh, well, no Swedish, but not the uh, GTE. And to make things easier here, especially when there are tricky strings, perhaps with some vari variables, I can copy the original just by clicking this first button. There is one more way of doing this, which you won't see, but if I keep control pressed and I hit enter, it will also uh, copy the string. And then I can translate it. like this. And uh, I need to keep track of if the um, source ends in a stop, then in Swedish, we will also end it in a stop. There are a lot of things to think about here. And uh, we have a list in our handbook with um, style guides, getting started guides about how you communicate in your particular language team, to whom you may want to talk if you need some mentoring or checking and so on. And then I can either click on the suggest or I can use the uh, keyboard command shift, which is like for uppercase letters and enter to send this in. And it is now a yellow uh, string, which means that it is waiting for translation, uh, for approval. And we can also see here, we can filter for pending strings. And now if um, someone would come along and happen to go to this plugin, but they are a translation editor, then they will have these additional uh, buttons here for approval, rejection. And if rejection, then they can add a comment here back to the translator about what could have been done better. 
um, I will just approve this one. And I do it by uh, either clicking here in approve, or if I am in this text window, then I can also keep control and hit plus on my number keyboard. So now this string will, in about five to 10 minutes, be visible if you look about uh, the information for this plugin in Swedish. Um, okay, we are almost running out of time. So um, any questions, suggestions, comments? I still have one. Yeah. Uh, the other day, Nilo presented the Translates Live tool with the playground. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we miss the context of the of the word, so to see live in how it will appear in the. Yeah. So I'm not very well versed with these things. Uh, if Nilo is still around, he may no. be able to show it. No, he. I think he has left. Yeah. But. Um, uh, I think there are some presentations around these things. So yeah, Playground is a very interesting thing that started happening around two years ago, where if you have good internet connection and uh, a good browser, um, then you can <laughs> install a local version of your Word of a WordPress site directly inside your browser. And this, this makes it possible to test things very uh, quickly if you're a developer. If you're tr uh, translating things, then this makes it possible to see how strings are used in a much more efficient way. Um, what I usually do is um, there are links to references where I can go and see the program code behind it. But for uh, JavaScript code, um, that usually doesn't help because the JavaScript code in almost all plugins tends to be uh, stripped of all things and it's just mashed into one huge line of code. And in that case, of course, being able to try this plugin and see where and how this text is used and also try it out. I mean, you'd have translated it and you can immediately see how it fits in. That is uh, a very interesting thing. And we have a lot of other quite interesting additional tools that can speed things up. And uh, therefore, you're welcome to ask in our uh, Polyglots channel in Slack and look around in our handbook. Um, and there are sections there about additional tools. And also there you can find lists to all um, getting started guides, style guides, and uh, glossaries that we are aware of. And that can help you becoming a good contributor quicker. Do we have time? So I share my screen and I just show you quickly. Yeah. Um, you have to allow me to share. I will. Um, one moment. Yeah, I was too quick. Yeah. Mm. Do, do, do. Because I know that in six minutes there is another onboarding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. do tw two in a row. Yeah. Uh, you, are, you are a hero. Mm. So you are a co-host now. So now you should be able. Uh, it's still ah oh, okay. Um, where is that? This one. So, I'm in French. Yeah. And I um chose uh word fans because it's it was in the first uh, in my list, so. I just have to move the zoom things around. Uh, here you can find Translate Live, yep. and it will basically open for you uh, a, a playground um, inside this uh, frame. And then uh, you can see the translated file, the waiting file, and the untranslated file, that, the same colors that you can see on the, the 
Oh, for the status. Okay. Yeah, the in the same um, the state the status that uh, Toby has shown you before. Okay, uh, so here you have a a fresh WordPress installation with, um, well, this plugin activated, and yes. of course translated to your own language, so you can see its strings in use. Yes, actually, I'm not sure I clicked on WordPress because I'm not, I don't see anything in green now. <laughs> but, okay. Okay, so um, if you go here, yeah, I think I, I have to choose uh, something else. Uh, I I saw that there was, uh, maybe it's because it's, it's stable. But I will choose a plugin with a little uh, translations. Like for example, here I see it's one percent progress. So let's let's do this one. Um, and here, translate live. So it installs uh, uh, WordPress in your browser, and with your uh, local, the language you chose, plus the plugin that you are, or, or the theme that you are translating, actually. So I hope there are some untranslated screens uh, here. For example, this plugin had a notice here, so it's in red because it's not translated. It detects that this is English, as it's not French. And you can see that because nothing has been translated almost, so everything is in English, but everything is in red. So uh, I can um, click on that and suggest a, tr a translation. For example, here. How does it work? <laughs> it's somewhere here. And then you can submit. But Nilo did a much better than my, a much better <laughs> yeah. uh, demo than, yeah, than me. Yeah, he's deeper involved. Yeah. yeah, so I should be able to, to click and suggest uh, translations. Well still but still you you can you see how more. it is used yeah. so and so, if you know the string then you can always find it and translate it in the normal interface also yeah because you you say that for example post you don't know if it is to post if it is a verb if it is yeah. so if you see in the context is much sometimes much more uh self-explanatory yeah um because you have another in another call in two minutes i stop here but <laughs> okay. yes uh, have a look at the glossaries for your language um, yeah. because it has to be consistent uh, in among plugin like for example in french you can say for to save we can we can say sauvegarder or enregistrer but then the the, the team chose and a word and we have to be consistent because if not it's a bit messy yeah yeah of course because kind of when the same term comes up in both the team and a couple of plugins and in wordpress code then it's good to use the same word so that things make a little bit more sense yeah. okay thank you everyone um i will <laughs> close the meeting now and uh, i will uh mm, ship the um, recording